Hello everyone and welcome back to 2 Pluto with a big rocket in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. And here we have our Pluto mission. It looked rather small in the previous episode because it had been launched by the Monument rocket and was rather dwarfed by it. But we can take a better look at here and just go through it and discuss some changes that I'm planning. So docking port and then my own Mars mission control module from the Mars colonization series. Uh, reaction wheels, two of them sized up a bit with tweak scale. Uh, the B330 from Raider Nix miscellaneous pack. And then this is from the USI colonization pack MKS Tundra Kerbitat, uh, size to six meters in this case. And then two cupolas. And then this is the awesomely huge uh, procedural food tank. Now I'm using a service module 4 tank, that's one of the, what you call it, these uh, service module procedural tanks. This might not be the best choice. Take a look at the dry mass of 48 tons versus the wet mass of 155. There, this other tank, this older tank for procedural parts is uh, not deprecated yet. <laughs> And uh, it might offer some alternatives. For instance, we've got a life support thing here. And let's just uh, temporarily increase its diameter somewhat. And if I just put food in, uh, we see that its ratio is about, it's about 11%. So the dry mass is 11% of the wet mass. Compared to this one where the dry mass is, oh, more than a third. So... Yeah, I think uh, using this tank would be better. So I might make that substitution and that'll give us a little bit more margin. And uh, here we have the docking hub. I've put two uh, containers for more waste and wastewater here. I don't have an option on my little uh, re water recovery systems for ignoring the wastewater or waste or something. I don't know what the rules are really or why it was having a hang up. So maybe if we put some more waste and wastewater containment, it'll help the recycling business. But I'm guessing it doesn't seem to be recycling fast enough. It doesn't seem to be updating the numbers fast enough. So I'm worried about that. Anyway, there's uh, the water tanks and nitrogen tanks for pressurization if we ever get back to using Kerbalism. And then the oxygen tank, which is also a service module tank. And here again, our ratio is not great, about a third dry mass. So if we replace this with one of those other tanks, that will be better. And here we have all the xenon, right? Uh, xenon gas, xenon gas, all the xenon gas. Uh, the little uh, KSP interstellar molten salt reactor, uh, thermal power generator, radiators, and the five uh, ion unit for Mars from my Mars colonization series. That's what they are. And uh, they're heavier than I thought they were. Uh, five point, uh, oh, sorry, four point five four tons. I thought they were two point eight, but okay. Well, that's but they're they're probably they probably ought to be heavy anyway. So yeah, uh, another change I'm gonna make, except for adding these and maybe converting those tanks to these tanks, is to add landers. I want to try and make a landing this time. Another thing I want to do is add lights, because <laughs> it was really dark, and we need lights. So, okay, I'm going to make those adjustments off camera, obviously, and we'll see how it goes this time. Okay, it doesn't look like this sort of lander will work out, but I just wanted to show this to you. This is sort of a homage to the Dynetics lander that uh, they're planning for the moon. But we, we have too much thrust to weight ratio on Pluto for this. And of course it uses methane and oxygen, the tug does. So for those not familiar, this is a tug I used in my previous series. And we are just putting a Mark II lander can on there and it so happens to look a whole lot like that Dynetics lander, doesn't it? But we would like storable fuels instead of methane and oxygen, I think. So I'll go with something else. Okay, so I've put lights, I've put two landers, and also a return capsule. And as a result, we've got lag again. Uh, so much for reducing lag by, you know, creating the launcher. Uh, we've got lag again because we've now created the landers and all the other business. So we will see. Uh, it's probably not as bad as it was before I 
created the monument launcher as it is right now and was using procedural parts and real engines, but yeah, this is, I can feel the lag. Uh, you see as the throttle goes up, uh, there's a delay when I do it. Anyway, so here we go. We are going to try to go to Pluto again. And we're swinging by Jupiter. We've, we're at August 28th, 1977, which should be close enough. So with that ignition, I'll show off the details, the lander and everything after we get to orbit. And launch. Got it over the launch pad this time. And I also added Katniss Cape Canaveral, which uh, may not be the best thing for this install stability, but we'll see. Uh, remember, I've got real exoplanets and a whole bunch of other stuff in that uh, makes it rather crowded. But, you know, we'll try it. The vehicle is heavier. The Pluto mission is heavier than it was before, despite switching to the, the lighter tanks. And that's because of the lander, landers and the capsule. Also carrying more water now, just in case. So it was five years of water last time, now it's 10. So we got six crew, 30 years of food, 10 years of water, 30 years of oxygen. And we'll see if we can go there, land, and bring them back, maybe. So, you know, best laid plans and everything. So, as we're past the speed of sound now, our crew involves Orbart, the geologist, Jeffrey, the mechanic, Neha Nehat, the technician, uh, Roner, the quartermaster, because we've got a lot of supplies to deal with, Tamri, the pilot, and Melling, the engineer. Tamri and Melling are in the cupolas. Because, you know, pilot and engineer need a good view, I guess. Okay, booster set. Hold on, let's see if I can get a good screenshot out of this. Come on, asterisk, do your thing. Oh, the shaders are going away. I really need to get into this Kerbal screenshot game. I'm pretty sure I've got some good ones that I could offer. <laughs> okay, we are now in space. Alright, separation and ignition. Okay, there we go. Very good. All nice and neat. No problems. And we should be go good for orbit on this stage, even though I uh, made the nuclear stage a little bit bigger to compensate for the heavier mass of the ship. Okay, we are approaching orbit here. And whoa, that was a sharp camera and shut down. Uh, 240 by 208 and fairing set. Ooh, a little bit tight. Uh, okay, we'll we'll give it some time before we separate off the bottom stage here. Because that'll give us a forward impulse, and I don't want to knock them. Okay, that should be clear. Alright. Stage set. And RCS. Uh, you can sort of see the capsule at the top there. It's just my Lynx spacecraft, uh, plus a service custom service module with storable fuels and an AJ-190 engine there. So I figure that could last a while. And we have landers on the side here. 
and they are just using MMH and Mon3 as well. And the Leros 4 engine, which is 1.1 kilonewtons, uh, they each have nine of those. And the benefit of those is they have unlimited ignitions and they slightly throttle, not a whole lot of throttle. Um, they provide a little bit of throttle, throttling range uh, between 0.9 kilonewtons and 1.4 kilonewtons. But hopefully that'll work out for us, we'll see. Okay, so we have a plot to Jupiter that takes us to Pluto in 14 years and 89 days. Unfortunately, making orbit at Pluto when we get there that quickly is not so easy. It takes about, about 8,000 meters per second. So that's a bit of a problem. But, well, as we saw last time, it, uh, it can change wildly. <laughs> so... Last time we plied for a slow path and ended up getting a faster one. So we'll see what happens. I've turned on the water recyclers. The resources in the landers and in the return pod are locked. The return pod still has to come back using the ion engines and everything. It's just that it uses the AJ-10190 to slow down a bit, otherwise Coming back from Pluto would probably burn up still. It's meant for Mars return. Not too much more beyond that, so we'll see. Well, we are pointing rather downward again. Okay, ignition. Though I probably should have started that earlier. Because they take a little bit of time to warm up, but at least we return to node in time. So off to an okay start. Okay, and let me just see. We used about that much of the methane and oxygen that the thrusters on this stage run on. So we might be able to cut it in half. Not that that'd help a huge amount. We are also still using methane oxygen thrusters on the main vessel. Uh, still using that primarily in the Mars mission control module, but I slapped additional ones in the back here with additional fuel because we sort of ran out last time. Oh, it uh, depleted that. Uh, that'll be fine. I won't pump up any. We'll see how it goes. Uh, uh oh, our periapsis is too low. Um, hmm. Okay, well, let's hope that helps. I mean, we're gonna enter the atmosphere a little bit, <laughs> but I don't think it's gonna be the burny, burny part of the atmosphere, maybe. Okay, back to pointing at node. Okay, I'm just gonna let this stage run out, of course. We seem to be short on Delta V because we were so far radial during the burn because of the long duration of the burn. You can take a look at how the orbit is shaping up, though. Keep an eye on that as well. Make sure we're not accidentally overburning. Well, it's a little bit off. Um, well, it's still sort of going in the right direction with the RCS. Or not. It's going up now. Uh, let's just make a correction. This is probably... Probably warrants a correction. It seems close enough, to be honest. I mean, for now. Okay, so... I mean, we, we don't have a solution for Pluto right now, but I think the next thing to do would be a mid-course adjustment. But uh, yeah, let's just decouple from this stage and then proceed. So what we have here, I don't know which engine that is, so that's not the right one. Okay, so ion units are now active. 12,000 meters per second with them right now. Again, once we get to Pluto, we'll have more because the food, water, and oxygen will get consumed. 
Hopefully not too much of the water this time. Okay, so I'm gonna plot to make course correction. Okay, the plot is complete and it'll cost 79 meters per second in 239 days. Actually, it seems to be measuring properly for the ion engines. I mean, three days ahead of time sounds pretty good. I mean, it sounds about right. So we will see. So off goes the old booster with its five nuclear engines, Timberwind nuclear engines. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, uh, update as we are just three days out. Methane oxygen bur uh, boil off much higher than expected. Not here, not in the control module, whatever kind of tank that is. But back here in these supplementary modules, even though I put MLI... Oh, there's no MLI layers. Oops. I thought I put MLI layers, but apparently not. So... Okay, we have not quite enough. We'll have to be really sparing about the methane oxygen the, for the RCS thrusters, and that's going to be intensely irritating, but all right. We will proceed. Hopefully we don't have to make too many maneuvers. It should be that we only need 25% or less of the duration in water. Could be as low as only 10%. We are carrying 33% in this case. Okay, that's a pretty good match for the Jupiter periapsis that we were looking for, except the timing seems to be off. And we don't have a Pluto encounter, of course. Um, let me just see if it's better just to do a correction out there. Okay, I did a minor correction of about 50 meters per second with the ion engines, and as a result, we have a plot for 67 meters per second after Jupiter that will get us to Pluto. Uh, Pluto encounter in, well, we don't see one there because it's crashing into Pluto. But zooming out. Uh, encounter in 14 years and 234 days, which should be a bit slower. But will it be slow enough? I don't know. We're flying pretty high above Jupiter. We're going to be at 1,000, sorry, oh, 1.044 million kilometers. So let's just get to that. And we will see what happens. I'm time warping right now at a rate that leads our water remaining to increase because it's chugging on the water, uh, wastewater still there. But there's probably a rate where it stops chugging on the wastewater properly. Very hesitant right now. It's going to be a long 15 years. I mean, there's never supposed to be any wastewater left because the uh, recyclers work fast enough to deal with any wastewater right at that time. So, otherwise it wouldn't be diminishing right now, right? Because the Kerbals produce the wa waste ra wastewater and the wa recyclers are supposed to deal with it. But somehow it accumulated, which means there was some lack of Lack of calculation. Well, there's the Jupiter system. And it's moons dancing about. I think we're getting closer to Jupiter this time than last time. And that's probably because we are going to end up at Pluto faster. Okay, so... Close to the outward bound. There we go. We're headed out from Jupiter. Okay. I think the final time warp step is a little bit rough for it. Attack life support definitely does not like that step. Okay, conducting the adjustment between Jupiter and Pluto here, and we have our Pluto encounter. Now in 9 years and 300 days, we're 5 years, 179 days elapsed. You can see the water is going up now, but uh, we've depleted about 2.5 years 
Um, hopefully not actually depleted two and a half years, we'll see. There's a lot of waste of water for it to process there and that's accumulated. Uh, we seem to be a little bit high, but we'll fix that when we get closer as part of the other burns. Okay. Okay, so we're still en route, but recall that I doubled the amount of water that we were carrying. And, you know, we ended up just running out of water right outside Pluto SOI last time. And that was after a trip of 20 years. This time... Uh, so, logically, we should have, like, five years left after 20 years kind of thing, right? Because that would be the same. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just logical. But uh, it's worse. As you can see, we only have four years left after 12 years only. Now, now it's recounting it, but it's not going to get up to where it ought to be. So, yeah, it's just really messed up. If I time warp faster, okay, it's, it's still accumulating. I've made sure to keep the waste clean, if you will. And now it's counting down again. So you see the max is uh, basically, oh, now it's counting up again. But, uh, yeah, it's just not calculating that right. It can't keep up, I don't think. So, I mean, we'll we'll have enough to get there, but we won't have enough water in particular to get back. Now, it might be that, uh, we recall last time we also went into negative in this accounting, but that was all very complicated. Then this started to catch up, so it's all... It's all messed up, basically. This uh, makes it look, look, look all right, because... Here we've only used about 10% of our water, but then why does that think we've used more? I don't know. Okay, we are handling this node that will bring us closer to Pluto, and after that it's all retro-burning. Basically matching orbits with Pluto, which is tough because we're like flung out like this, so first we have to recapture around the sun. I mean... That's why it costs so much. Okay, I handled the uh, maneuver and it's going to take 7,800 to capture around Pluto. We have that, but it's just going to take a while. And so we have 205 days of burn time. Oh, let's just stop the RCS for now. And so I'm guessing about 130 days it's going to take altogether. Why is there still... Oh, it's still rebalancing the food, water, and oxygen. Gosh darn it. Going like, why should the mass be changing? We don't have RCS on. We don't have the engines on. Well, attack life support is trying to do its thing still. Which, uh, well, anyway, it won't get us on the water before we get there at least, I think. So, all right. Maybe we wait 20, 30 days. Uh, I think we can wait a little bit longer because as we slow down... Uh, it takes longer to actually get to Pluto, so I think we can take, we can start at about 90 days, let's say, and see if that works out. Probably it's going to take multiple attempts and corrections. So I'm doing the main retro burn here and uh, trying various angles to sort of optimize our approach, but... Attack life support is rebalancing all the things and taking away all my water again. <laughs> you can see it, it's disappearing. Remember how it was basically 90% just a little while ago? Well, it's all going away now. Uh, on the right side, that means that we're increasing our delta V, but... Okay, we are in Pluto SOI and we have 959 meters per second of burn left to do. And so, well, it says 27 days to periapsis. Now, last time I was a little bit late on doing the burn, but I think uh, if we start 15 days ahead, we should be fine. I've been a little bit better about doing the approach burns. The reason it seems like we haven't done the huge 7,000 meters per second is because we got a lot of Delta V back by all the water going away and all the food going away, and especially the water. Our water is heavy. 
Okay, well, that's about half the burn, and now it's lengthened our time to periapsis. We now have 18 days left, so I'll wait another 10 days and then do some more. Okay, so here we are, and somehow I still didn't manage to do it right. Just this last bit. Had plenty of time. Well, on the bright side, no Kerbals have died so far. We are reasonably well lit. That's nice. If we put them all in landers, we could immediately land, of course. The landers have enough fuel to slow down the remainder of this. This is fairly slow, but... And I'll try and get this into orbit. So, how long is it until Pluto escape? 46 days. Well, at some point, we'll slow down enough, right? Right? Same as before. Well, as long as Pluto escape time is increasing, we should capture. There we go. Okay, that's about as much as we can do like that. Okay, so we're gonna come down like a comet. I mean, really, it's a straight line down. So, wow, we, our orbital velocity is 0.1 meters per second. You don't often see that. Okay, well, this seems like generally the right thing to do. Our periapsis is coming up very slowly, oral period coming down. So, yep, this is good. It's just a matter of doing it in time, especially that periapsis, by the time we get to our currently non-existent periapsis. Okay, a little bit early, but that's good, that's good. Alright, well I think I'll conclude here. I'm going to continue bringing the orbit down a little bit, but we are in orbit around Pluto, and the question is, can we make some landings? Uh, Kerbals are alive. Can we land on Pluto and Sharon slash Karen? And what are our actual prospects for getting back? We've got 8,000 meters per second here. Is that sort of enough? Even if our Kerbals don't survive because of the remaining water, um, could we bring the pod back down through Earth's atmosphere uncrewed? Well, I am going to leave that for next time because I'm literally out of time. So, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.